Greetings humans, Practical Earth here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use my Block Artist 1.0 printer. Hey guys, future me here, uh, and I wanted to point out that I completely forgot to tell you that I'm actually on a server right now. I'm on Stim's Redstone server, uh, so if you want to check this out, here's the IP, and here's the coordinates of my build. Alright, thanks. See ya. So the first thing you want to do when using my printer is you want to check and make sure that the ink is all filled up. Now, I've already filled it, but if it's not filled up, you just place in black concrete in the black slot and the white concrete in the white slot, and it, it's all good. Next thing you need to do is you want to go down here to this chest here. And my machine does 6x6 six six prints, so that's what you want to do. You want to make um, designs that are 6x6 six six in this chest, and you can do that by just ignoring these last three slots in each row. So I'm going to be making a creeper face here. So I'm just going to keep placing in all of it. And remember, once you've done your black, don't forget to place in white, as it is very crucial, and it will break. Alright, then after that, you just want to press the button, and the ma machine should just start printing. So, I, uh, I've added in this jukebox here, so if you feel like it, you can just pop in some music and watch it print. Once it is done printing, it should just come out right here. It's just as simple as that. So, I have actually just realized that I forgot to show one of the more important parts of how to use this, uh, the reset button. It just resets the machine and you got your print here I'm just gonna break this print now okay so this here is the inside of my machine you can see it from the outside with these glass normally this would probably be like iron like the front here However, I made it glass because I want you guys to be able to see through it and see all the redstone that goes into it. At its core, it's relatively simple, I'd say. Um, there's, uh, there's just a couple parts. There's the uh, print reader, which reads what you have put into the chest. There's the... Um, ink cartridge which which flows ink down into the ink chute and converter which receives the concrete powder and turns it into regular concrete and pushes it along and then 
the uh, paper conveyor, which pushes the paper along and it work, and that's what makes it really print. Now these are all color coded. The last, the only thing I didn't mention is the blue, because that's just the simple activation. When you press the button, it activates. But I'm gonna go color by color. Oh, and there's also the iron blocks over here, which are the reset button. I'm gonna go color by color, starting with red. So red, basically what it does is it takes an item and sorts it through, and then gives off a signal which tells the ink cartridge which ink to push down into the chute. It also, um, it, it takes the chest input one by one uh, using a monostable circuit and a redstone torch which locks the hopper. And then it's just a, a basic sorter mechanism that sorts um, white glass panes and black glass panes. Okay. Now, like I said earlier, the blue is just the activation. It goes to the shoot mechanism, which can activate, ah, crit, lag, which can activate the sorter. So here's how the shoot mechanism works. Basically, well, actually, no. First, I need to show you how the ink cartridge works. It's actually really simple. The ink cartridge here receives signals from the print reader and and just the print reader gives off the signals based on which item is going through the system and it tells it to drop in black or drop in white. And then it goes into the yellow part which is the shoot. The shoot basically receives the ink from the ink cartridge and it detects it with this tripwire because once the concrete powder is falling, it is technically an entity, so it can be detected by this tripwire. Then when it reaches down here, you have some water, which is actually through this pipe here because there's no way to really block off the water. So you're basically stuck having to just naturally have it flow and not go everywhere. And then, basically, it reaches the bottom here after it's been detected by the tripwire, and it just has a push, it, uh, uh, and it just has a piston that pushes it along onto the conveyor. So the paper conveyor here, it actually does a lot. The main part of this paper conveyor, at the beginning at least, is it receives a uh, the paper and ink from the shoot. It just goes one by one, and once it reaches here, this redstone torch sends a signal through the block and onto a redstone dust. That redstone dust is then connected to all these pistons, the pistons power, and it just keeps moving down until it reaches up to here, at which point this redstone torch here why, why have I had my debug menu open this entire time? I have no clue. Basically, this redstone torch here um, powers the block once it reaches down here, and that powers this mechanism here, which tells these flying machines to go. And then they reach here. Uh, once they reach here, one of the rows of the print is um, within this lip here. And we don't want that because then it's not viewable from the outside. So what it does is we have this row of torches. And once these pistons reach that row of torches, that tells them to extend out and then leaves the paper from getting in the slip, which makes the entire thing viewable. The last me mechanism here is the reset button. Now the reset button gets signals here 
from the uh, after you press the button yes you get this redstone torch goes through here and it tells all these redstone lamps to turn off then the observers see the redstone lamps have turned off because they are right up against the redstone lamps and they're like oh crap i gotta move so they do now another thing that this does is it also turns off these torches here because you can't really move an extended piston so you have to retract the piston before you can move it with a flying machine or else it will just stay there and we don't really want that now it also depowers this torch here now this torch here actually gets depowered twice it gets depowered when it re when the blocks reach here because when they move forward we don't want this piston here getting caught on that torch because extended pistons cannot move now it also does that when the reset button is hit because again it goes back and then this piston could get stuck on here extended so that's really not gonna do any good because it will get stuck again so basically what it does is when this these torches turn on which is what turns these torches off um this large pulse extender thing uh actually powers the same mechanism from the beginning where it stops it so this torch stays off long enough for all these to retract all the way and that is practically what it is hope you enjoyed and uh, see you later bye